Well, the example I did in the previous slide, um, on the previous two slides, was exactly 7. Now I want to consider the question, what if you want to figure out the probability that this, this basketball player makes 7 or fewer? Well, 7 or fewer is 7 or 6 or 5 or 4. So I rewrote that as the probability that x, which is our binomial random variable, is less than or equal to 7. And notice in the previous problem, this was an equal sign, not a less than or equal to. Well, if you make less than or equal to 7 free throws, you either made exactly 7 or exactly 6 or, I put a dot, dot, dot here just to save space, exactly 1 or exactly 0. Okay? The only really way to do this one by hand is to, it's kind of a big pain because you have to think about uh, less than or equal to 7 as it's discrete, so there's only so many possibilities. So when you write it out longhand, Look what I had to do. I had to say, well, here is the probability of making exactly 7. Plus, here is the probability of making exactly 6. Notice everything stays the same except k. Well, actually, this is n minus k, but it ch this changes every time. Okay. Plus, and I put a dot, dot, dot here, then I jump down to 1. This is the probability of making exactly 1. Notice it looks exactly like here, just switch the 7 with the 1. Plus, here's the probability of making exactly 0. And then you just do all those calculations. Oh, it's so simple. Add those all up, and you get about 0.3222. Okay. If the question says do it by hand, this is the kind of work you'd have to show. Okay. Now, the reality is no one in their right mind is going to, because if we, we did this at one point, even this was hard. To do this seven more times is going to be hideous. Um, so you typically what we do is we kind of show this work as if we're doing it out longhand, and then we fake it, and we use the calculator. Um, so let me show you how to do that. On the previous page, or a couple slides back, we talked about binomial PDF. Well, right below that is something called binomial CDF. Binomial PDF stood for Binomial Probability Distribution Function. Binomial CDS stands for binomial cumulative distribution function. The difference is when you're talking about PDF, it's exactly one value. It's an equal sign. When you're talking about binomial CDF, it's that number or less than or equal to. So the way I remember it is that PDF is an equal sign where CDF is a less than or equal to. The still works NPK the exact same way. But notice here in the example I just did, we want to figure out the probability that x is less than or equal to 7. So I use CDF, not PDF. Here's still NPK the same way, and it gives me that whole answer. It adds up 7 plus 6 plus 5 all the way down to 0. Okay. So this is really a key thing to understand. If you want to do equals, it's PDF. If you want to do less than or equal to, it's CDF. Okay? Which, of course, leads to the obvious question, well, what, if we, what if we want to do any other symbol besides equal or less than or equal to? Well, the answer is you have to rewrite the question to do that. So if I said, for example, what's the probability this person shoots more than five free throws, or sorry, makes more than five free throws, well, that's an X is greater than five. We don't have an easy way in the calculator to do greater than 5, so I have to rewrite it as 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 5. Because think about it, if you made greater than 5, how many did you make? You made 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10. Well, what's the logical opposite of that? It's 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, or 0. Like when I said 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, what numbers didn't I say? I said did not say 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So I've rewritten the greater than as 1 minus a less than, and now I can just do 1 minus, this is going to be up here, this is binomial CDF down here, and I calculate the numbers, and I get there's about a 97% chance you make more than 5 free throws out of 10. Okay, let's get a little practice re-kind of translating English into these symbols. Okay, in this page, I've got four little examples. We're not actually going to calculate the numbers. We're just going to figure out what you would do on the calculator. Well, more than four, we would write the probability that x is greater than four. Well, one of the little trick I think about is when I say more than four, 
what numbers is that? Well, let me just kind of write out three, four, five, six, seven. More than four is these numbers over here, okay? Um, and so when you think about more than four, okay, we have to rewrite this as one minus the probability that x is less than or equal to four, which would be one minus binome CDF using the same numbers 10.8 comma four. Okay. Well, how about six or more? Well, six or more, if I just did this down here, three, four, five, six, seven, where is six or more? Well, that includes six. So here I'm going to go like this. Okay. And then so the probability of six or more, well, that's an X is great. Oh, geez. That's X is greater than or equal to six, which is actually the same thing as X is greater than five. So I have to rewrite this as 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 5. And then that would be, I'm kind of running out of room here, but it would be 1 minus binome CDF 10.85. Okay. See how drawing this little picture like this sometimes kind of helps you figure that out? Well, let's see, at least five. At least five, if I have at least five free throws, I made five or six or seven or something like that. So if I wrote it again, three, four, five, six, at least five would look something like this. Okay, so what did I just draw there? I drew the probability that x is greater than or equal to five, which is the same thing, probability that x is less than four. So that's going to be a one minus binomial. No, what did I just say there? I wrote the wrong thing. Oh, gee, what's going on now? Oh, no. And now I can't erase this. Great, okay. Let's cross this out, because I would have interest the probability that x is greater than 4. And I redo, redo this as 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 4. So this would be, cross this out, 1, one minus binome CDF. 10.8, comma, 4. See, when we were working on normal CDF, when we were working with normal CDF, it really didn't matter whether it was like a greater than or a greater than or equal to. Because, But now, binomial distributions are discrete, so it really, really matters whether it's you know less than 5 or less than or equal to 5, because it matters whether it includes 5 or not. Okay. Well, how about fewer than 3? So if I said, for example, oh, gee, where's my pen? two, three, four, five, six. Well, where are fewer than three? It means you did not get three, so it's just these numbers. So that's just the probability that x is less than three, which is the same thing the probability is x is less than or equal to two. So here it's a less than or equal to, so no need for a one minus. It's just binome, binome CDF 10.8 comma two. Just plain old, and you'll get lots of lots of practice with this. Okay, sometimes we want to know what is the mean and standard deviation of a random variable, and we so in our, these symbols we learned uh, back in chapter seven. Remember, we talked about mu of x and sigma of x. That would be like on average, how many free throws did you make, or what's the standard deviation of the number of free throws you made if you repeated multiple this experiment multiple times. Well, in, back in Chapter 7, we learned about a formula that looked like this, right? Where the mean of x is, remember, just outcome times probability, outcome times probability, and you add them all up. Um, well, it turns out that this formula would still work because binomial random variables are discrete. So you could actually figure out all the possible outcomes and add them all up. But it turns out we're not going to do that. There's a much easier way to do it for when you know specifically it's a binomial random variable. So if x is a binomial random variable, um, the mean of x is just n times p. Think about it. This person is shooting 10 free throws. They make 80% of them. On average, how many would they make? Well, it's going to be just whatever 10 times 0.8 is. Wouldn't on average you expect them to make 8 free throws? The mean of x is 8. Standard deviation of x is a little bit harder, but it turns out here's the formula. It's square root of n times p times q. 
So we would say square root of 10 times 0.8 times 0.2, and whatever that works out to be. Okay, we're going to, um, so how do you know when to do this? The question will probably say on average how many free throws would you make or what's the standard deviation of free throws you would make.